and welcome to this week's preview show coming from Vitality Stadium. BBC Radio Solent's Chris Temple is back alongside me as we look ahead to a huge game in the Premier League. Here's what's coming up today. We'll start back at Monday night and that FA Cup defeat to Arsenal. Before we then turn our attention to tomorrow and that game against Aston Villa. Well, we're going to start back at Monday night and that 2-1 defeat to Arsenal in the FA Cup. Chris, what did you make of that one? It was a, a slow start to start off with, wasn't it? I think slow is, is generous. Um, yeah, I mean, Arsenal, for, for the fact they made a lot of changes and it was quite a, some of their young, bright English attacking talent, I thought they were absolute ballers for the first half an hour. I mean, Bournemouth couldn't get near them, two down. Uh, yes, Bournemouth were slow starters, but I think Arsenal had a, a big part to play in that. They just used the ball so well, um, so athletic, quick on the counter-attack. Uh, and Bournemouth actually did well. It sounds stupid being 2-0 down after 25 minutes, but did pretty well to stay in the game. Um, got better after half-time, um, came out with a bit more sense of urgency. Um, Arsenal were sort of pinned back a little bit more, obviously had a threat on the counter-attack still. Um, and it's just a shame it took so long for the, the sort of what turned out to be the consolation goal to come, even though it was a great moment for Sam Surridge. I think if that goal comes even five, ten minutes earlier, then, you know, all of a sudden it could have been, uh, you know, the, the pressure was coming towards the North Stand. But ultimately, I think no one could argue that Arsenal deserved to win and Eddie Howe said that he thought his side grew into the game would you agree with that yeah absolutely just I, th I don't know if they were just caught cold a little bit by how good Arsenal were in the first you know obviously the you know the first goal after five minutes is a, is a disastrous start but I think Arsenal were you know with five or six changes and some guys who hadn't played a lot of football I mean Saka off the left was I'm, I'm, I kept saying in commentary I'm sure he was hiding in the hot dog stand and just kept coming out hiding on the touchline uh, I mean you know down the left hand side and Ketia you know as leading the line young guys but out in the championship you know look fantastic Martinelli, you know, great pace for a Brazilian. Guendouzi is, you know, irritating as an opponent, but you'd love to have him in your team. He's a classic. He's in the Jefferson Lerma category of, um, but he's got every single trick in the book. He's 20 years of age, but he's got everything, every bit of time wasting, shirt pulling, blocking free kicks from being taken. Um, but when he gets the ball, very useful as well. So yeah, you know, their experienced back line didn't really have too much to worry them until, until Sam Surridge popped up. And looking at that team on paper, Bournemouth would have been thinking, you know, None of these players, they're not playing regularly in the team, they're, they're young, perhaps some of them might not have played with each other, there was no Aubameyang, no Lacazette, but as you say, they came out and they were faultless for the first half an hour, really. Yeah, then there's, there's lads in the Bournemouth team who hadn't played a lot, you know, Andrew Sermon comes in, has hardly played, Lewis Cook hasn't played a lot, um, you know, Jack Simpson hasn't played a lot, so there's, as, unfortunately, as many as the big names were missing for Arsenal, then Bournemouth, because of needs and because of the need to get some minutes into some other guys, um, obviously rotated the team around as well. I think it was the, sort of, probably both teams were about as strong as you expected them to be. Uh, Bournemouth don't have a squad to make 11 changes, um, so it was a, a strong enough team you know the likes of, of uh, obviously Callum coming on late on um, Dom Solanke you know found it difficult in the number nine role on his own it, we haven't seen him play that role very often he found it a bit difficult um, but yeah I, I think the biggest positive was, was Sam Surridge getting that goal if you can have a positive in a, in a losing in a losing match I was going to mention Sam Surridge great for him you know come back from Swansea on loan and he's here trying to you know make strides towards the first team towards starting and you know he came on and it was only for a couple of minutes but he certainly he certainly did all right didn't he well he I've read some of his quotes from earlier in the season actually he talks about his goals per minutes ratio that is one stat that he he sort of targets with you if you're a player who sometimes is going to be on the bench I mean he came on for what a couple of minutes and then eight minutes of added time so he had about 10 minutes um, it was a great finish as well really composed finish and you know, took a touch sent the keeper for a, a Burton and then rolled it in the corner and of course it immediately you know brings up the the question should he have been brought on earlier which is one that you know we'll never know the answer to if it made a difference uh, and also now the fact that he can score but you know Dom Solanke is finding it difficult Callum obviously he's back on the gold trail but has been finding it difficult as well so I think the problem is often players become much better when they're not on the pitch um, if things aren't going well all the best players are the ones that aren't playing. So the difficulty for Sam Surridge is that he, he still has to bridge that gap to the Premier League. Um, Eddie's in no doubt that he's come back from Swansea better than before he went there. So a spell in the Championship has done him a great, a great bit of good. And I think, again, sometimes in this situation, you want to see people who are chasing everything, winning everything, making enterprising runs, trying to beat the defenders, getting to the near post, get winning headers. You know, he clattered Guendouzi down here and got booked. You know, supporters want to see those kind of things so I think it's still a waiting game with Sam I think it's one for people to be patient with and he has got to knock out you know Callum Wilson who's an England international striker out of the team really for that role so I'll be interested to see if he gets maybe not a start but more of a chance tomorrow if if Bournemouth aren't on top in the game and just finally Eddie Howard admitted that there were a couple of players carrying knocks Diego Rico Jefferson Lerma both not involved on on Monday night so that kind of 
week's rest for them without a game should hopefully see them come back firing for, for tomorrow. Yeah, hopefully. Of course, Villa went relatively strong for their League Cup semi-final, which was a day later, so they've had a day less, less rest than Bournemouth. Um, yeah, the likes of Jefferson Lerma, obviously, he's been carrying a couple of knocks, but he has been back to his sort of full and firing best. Diego Rico, I think, has been, as you said, battling through a bit of a shin splints, I think, has been the issue that he's had. Obviously, the Cherries aren't well stocked with fit left backs, so they do need to treat him particularly carefully. Uh, there was, of course, you know, links with Danny Rose for the transfer deadline. He's gone to Newcastle now. Whether he would have ever come here, I'm not sure. Um, Lloyd Kelly obviously has got had a bit of a setback as well. So um, Jack Simpson, I thought, did you know actually some of his attacking play. You know, he's not a natural left sort of left-sided attacking player. He's always been a centre half. So um, it's great that he is left-footed and that's his natural side. But I think he, you know, ultimately his his stronger suit is defensively. But I thought he acquitted himself pretty well going forward against Arsenal. So yeah, um, I think. Apart from that, there's uh, one or two other minor knocks. A couple of the guys are getting a bit closer, the likes of Jack Stacey, Junior Stanislas, Joshua King, if you're still here, um, you know, a couple of weeks away. So, yeah, uh, maybe some numbers coming back. Dan Juma is sort of the mystery man at the minute. I'm not sure anyone knows where he is or how, how far away he is. <laughs> well, we'll wait and see on that one. Now, next up, our attention turns to tomorrow's game against Aston Villa. Let's take a look at what Eddie Howe had to say in his pre-match press conference. We've never really been in the market for anything um, for any permanent signings this window. Um, we're looking at loans and, and seeing what we can do. Uh, Josh is much valued and loved by us. Yeah, he's a massive, massive part of our team, has been for a long period of time. He brings that unique pace and strength that he has, coupled with a really good technical ability and an eye for goal. So he's, I think, been a massive part of what we've done the last few years here. Junior Stanislas, Josh King, Jack Stacey, they're all getting closer. Um, which will be a welcome boost to us, three key players. Um, so we'll see who's fit for this game. It's a, another big moment in our season. I think we cast our mind back to the Brighton game where we knew how big that game was and the feeling of the players, the feeling of the supporters in the stadium was, was absolutely brilliant. The collective effort from everyone was there. And we're going to need the same again from everyone in the stadium, from all the players, everyone connected with the, the team. You know, this is a stage where we have to give absolutely everything in this match. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking in this morning's press conference. Chris, there's no doubt about it that it's a, a huge game here at Vitality Stadium tomorrow. It's another one we can build up the same way as we built up Brighton. It's, I guess, the two games, similar intensity, similar meaning in terms of being against the teams right around Bournemouth. Um, this time, there's you know there's quite a couple of big psychological markers that could come with a win. First of all, going above Villa, so you get another team between you and the danger zone. Climbing out of the bottom three, potentially going as high as 15th, because Brighton obviously are within reach in 15th at the moment. Um, so there's a a lot of things on this game that if the result went the right way could just suddenly look you know I know it's only one game and it's another week but the week climbing back out of the bottom three I think would be a huge psychological factor because a lot of people are saying it's sort of probably two from four to feel if you're saying that Norwich have got a lot to do um, it's probably two from four at the moment to fill the rest of those places but I still think there's a couple of other teams that can be dragged back into it so keeping them in reach is, is massive um, but yeah Villa will be on a high obviously what a great week they had beating Leicester in the League Cup final that can go two ways it can lift the camp which I'm sure it has for a few days but then the next game can always be the cliched Lord Mayor's show so after the Lord Mayor's show so let's hope it's the latter from that point of view um, but Villa have had a you know they've been through a rut um, have suddenly got it back together at the right time um, starting to you know put some form together and a bit of spirit together um, to be fair I think spirit is probably one thing they've always had actually it's that kind of club but um, take out the 6-1 defeat to Manchester City and everything else recently has been a bit more encouraging they've obviously got a couple of last minute winners beat Watford in the last minute which is a huge result for them in a, a similar game like this um, but Bournemouth being on home soil off the back of that Brighton performance which again you know was a slow start and Arsenal was a slow start so they need to start faster that's for sure um, but hopefully those re and finished the game pretty well against Arsenal so hopefully that will provide some momentum to take into this one. You mentioned that Brighton game and of course we've already beaten Villa away from home this season albeit it was early days but the squad and, and Eddie Howe they can take huge confidence from that can't they? Yeah I, feel, I could barely remember it was that long ago Josh King got a penalty didn't he and uh, Tyrone Mings deflected that Harry Wilson shot in for the uh, what proved to be the winner. Um, I thought Tyrone Mings was going to pull his hamstring in midweek actually watching that game and might be ruled out of this one but he seems to be okay um, but you know what a what a great season he's had there as well. Um, awkward player to play against as well you know for, for Callum or whatever you know they'll have had so many battles on the training ground Bournemouth got the better of the, the game earlier in the season as you say um, but yeah Villa you know it holds special memories in a way because it was the first Premier League fixture it's the first time Villa have been here since that first ever Premier League game which they won so let's hope they don't repeat that this time um, but yeah Dean Smith you know Villa fan Scotland playing 
I mean, Jack Grealish, you've got, we've got to mention Jack Grealish. Uh, he's, he's absolutely central to everything they do. He's built a great partnership with Matt Target, actually, down the left-hand side, the former Southampton uh, youngster who scored, of course, here um, in the past as well for Southampton, I think. Or, no, scored at St Mary's, didn't he? Um, but, yeah, they seem to have built a good partnership. And Jack Grealish, I'm sure, is a shoe in for England uh, in the next international break. So, I think shackling him which most teams will try and do is, is one thing, but also, of course, then you, you're taking a bit of attention away from other players as well. So they've got, you know, one or two injury problems they've had in the in the, the past. Tom Heaton, of course, has been injured, so they've got a choice to make in goal. Does Rayner play or does uh, Neyland play? Who had a great game in midweek, so goalkeeping-wise, they've got choices. Um, but yeah, if, if you're going to pin someone down, tie him up and lock him in a cupboard somewhere, Jack Grealish. I was going to mention, you've already answered my next question. The one to watch. <laughs> Ask it anyway. <laughs> Jack Grealish, he's been in superb form this season. Of course, we all know what Tyrone Mings has been capable of. He's had a, a great season for Aston Villa. They've, they've got their threats, don't they? They do, yeah. I mean, just banging on a bit more about Grealish. I mean, he's, he's one of those players, he, he, he is infectious, isn't he? I mean, he's, he's uh, an inspiration to not just the team, but to the fans as well. Um, he certainly seems, I mean, he had a, one or two problems earlier in the season where, you know, he's had sort of off-field scrapes in the past, but he seems to have matured. He seems to have um, let his football do, you know, sort of speak for him now. Um, so, yeah, he'll, he'll be coming here. And again, well, in a team that's on a high or, or on a more of a high than they have been, players like him, they do tend to come to the surface a little bit more. So, um, yeah, looking out for him, obviously. They, their big striker, Wesley, got injured, of course. They brought in the, the guy from Tanzania who's um, Bamza. I've got to, I'm a, sorry, sorry to those watching in Tanzania, but I've forgotten his name. You've got to learn it before tomorrow. I've got to learn, I will learn it before tomorrow. He's coming from Genk. Um, but yeah, he should have scored in midweek as well to get himself off and flying. So who knows what he'll, uh, how he'll adapt to the Premier League. But... It's still Jack Grealish. Same answer to the previous question, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and we've touched a bit in the last section about our injuries and players coming back. You know, Jack Stacey hopefully getting a bit closer. What's Eddie Howe had to say to you this morning? Yeah, I mean, it, they, when they're talking about new signings, and I mean, we're recording this before the deadline is shut, so who knows what will, what will happen between now and this being uh, being aired. But um, it's, it's one of those where if they couldn't bring anybody in, then at least they're getting two or three back. So... Um, the squad might be looking a bit healthier. The likes of Stanislas, the likes of Stacey. Again, Joshua King, we're standing here a little bit unknown as to what's going to happen with him. Um, but, you know, big players, if you can get them back and have choices all of a sudden, because, you know, Ryan Fraser, who, you know, obviously has been in the news a little bit this week. Um, I hope Ryan Fraser deserves everyone's support. I mean, the, the, a quick reflection on what he had to say this week. Eddie Howe has spoken this, this morning about it and has said that sometimes the wee man is too honest for his own good and just wears his heart on his sleeve and his words can sometimes come out wrong. And I think this time his words were interpreted, you know, what he actually said compared to what he probably meant um, without putting words in his mouth. I think he meant he'd been below par. He hadn't made as much of a difference as he would have liked, not that he hadn't been trying. So I really, really hope there's, there's no negativity towards him because he has shown in the last few weeks that he's, he's back towards the contributing guy, bombing up and down the touchline yes you know he's still trying to work on those assists and those goals but I think his, his focus is here now you know, lots of talk about the window and what might happen or whatever he can't go anywhere unless he goes anywhere in the next couple of hours he can't go anywhere until the summer so he's got to get his head down everyone's got to back him um, and hopefully he'll have a big part to play just finally, looking ahead tomorrow, how can you see it going? What's your score prediction? You haven't asked me for a score prediction for weeks, which know, is probably just I'd as well given there. how bad they've been going um, I think Bournemouth might nick it I do think they might nick it uh, I can see an edgy sort of game, though. Uh, I'm going to say 1-0. I'm going to say a clean sheet, which is quite a bold prediction this season, but I'm going to go for a clean sheet. 1-0 and a clean sheet. You heard it here first. If you are coming to Vitality Stadium tomorrow, then we hope you enjoy your afternoon. If not, make sure you listen to Chris on BBC Radio Solent for all the updates. Bye for now.